All right. Well, thank you all for joining today. My name is Leah Holtrop, and in today's training, we're going to end our Back to Basics series with a look at our asset management feature in Salamander Live, and we'll also take a look at our inventory app. So last month, we covered uh, the track solutions, and the month before that, we covered tags. So this month is all about inventory. Now, due to time, I'm going to just be covering the main functionalities for each solution. I'll also provide some best practices so that you can get the most out of today's training. Um, at any time, if you have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself, or you can ask um, a question through the chat function in the, um, in the web browser. All right, so before we go into the walkthrough, I just want to do a little background on uh, our asset management and inventory app, just for those that may be new to the solution. So the inventory management, what this feature does is it's going to provide inventory-related functionality within the equipment database that's already in Salamander Live. So you'll have functions such as uh, the ability to create consumables, setting alerts, as well as providing um, inventory-related reports. Now, the inventory app works in conjunction with the inventory management feature that's in Salamander Live. What it does is it gives you the ability to issue out your assets and then have them returned, you know, whether that is you know, in the context of an event or not. So every issuance that you do within the inventory app, you can link it basically to an event or, or not. So I'll show you that when we walk through that process. Now, with the app, you can scan the equipment and you can also run a basic audit. So everything that you do within the inventory app, all the act activity that you do in this can be viewed within the inventory reports within Salamander Live. And I'll show you where those inventory reports are, are located in Salamander Live. All right, so let's get this up and running. So we're going to first just walk through the inventory functions that's available within Salamander Live. So the inventory functions are going to be available in version 2, so make sure you're logged into version 2 of Salamander Live. Let's go ahead and log in. All right, when you log in, you'll see on the left panel there is a menu. You'll want to go into your equipment. So your equipment in here basically is the same as your inventory um, database. So this is your equipment database, your inventory database. You can put in here your consumables with your assets. So in here, there's a couple ways you can um, and add in inventory. You can uh, manually add them into the system, or you can do an import. We're just going to quickly walk through the manual add, and then I'll show you guys the process for importing. It's going to take a second to mute everybody here for a second. Seems to be a lot of background noise here. Okay. All right, so to add equipment or add inventory, it's simply as going to your equipment list and then clicking the plus button right here. So you'll see in here a window pops up and you've got some options in here to enter in data. So there's three pieces of information that's, that's required for adding a piece of equipment or an inventory item. So the ID, the name, and the organization. The ID in here, you've got two options. You can either use the system-generated ID, which is what's right here, or you can enter in your own custom ID. So the custom ID, just make sure that that is unique for that item, for that organization. You can't share that same ID for the same organization. Um, for the item name, you can put anything you want in there. And then the organization, this here, you want to make sure that the organization already exists. You aren't able to create any um, equipment records, people records, or even um, secured users if this organization does not exist. So as you start typing, you'll notice that there's going to be a drop-down for matches for your entry. And then from there, you can just select what, is, what organization this item belongs to. So if we put that in here, you can put in your, um, your item. So in here, we're just going to put face mask. 
ID number. There's other information if you want to enter in here, you can. Description, station, parent, category. Parent is um, a field that allows you to link your equipment together. So it creates that parent-child relationship. So if, for example, you, you add in a truck, and on that truck there is a compartment. So that would be a child of, the compartment would be a child of that truck. Then you can create a grandchild, let's say that's the toolbox. Um, and then you can create, create a great-great-grandchild, which is all the tools that belongs in that toolbox, that belongs in the compartment, that belongs in that truck. So that's kind of how you can create that linkage of all your equipment. In the inventory app, you are able to filter your list by parent. So this, this field here is going to be very handy and helpful when you um, are utilizing the inventory app. Same thing with the category field. This one, if you enter in categories, you are able to filter your list in, in uh, the inventory app by category. It just allows you to zone in on the piece of equipment you're looking at trying to find within the inventory app. So category, you can create categories for, for all your equipment. So you can put your medical supplies and medical supplies, all your, your laptops, phones and stuff, and electronics, whatever it is that you want to categorize it by. But there's multiple ways in which you can do so. You'll also see at the top here, there's an option for you to mark this as consumable. So this consumable feature is only available if you have inventory management. So if you don't have inventory management, you're not going to even see this, this option to mark this item as consumable. Since this is a disposable face mask, we'll mark it as consumable. Once you do that, you're going to see that there's going to be another tab that populates over here called inventory. And within this field, or within this tab, you can go in and enter in the quantity quantity that you have on hand for this item. So quantity on hand, um, you can count what you have on here, so I'm going to 25. What is the max in stock? So every single one of these fields, if you fill it out, there's going to be a report, a consumables report that will show you and do all the calculations for you for what you need to reorder so it meets your max in stock. So in here, max in stock, I'm just going to put in here, you know, this is uh, COVID you know, with COVID and everything, so we'll make sure that we put enough in there in the system. So 5,000. The the max quantity that you that you can put in here, it's it's about nine digits. So you, you can go up to a million. Uh, reorder quantity. Uh, this is the what what is the threshold for when this item should alert you? So when you actually meet this reorder quantity. So let's say the reorder reorder quantity is let's go higher. So quantity on hand is 250. Reorder quantity is 100. So when your quantity right here hits 100, what is going to happen is that Salamander Live is going to send you a notification that lets you know that this item is ready to be reordered since it's met your reorder quantity threshold. So that notification is done um, automatic by Salamander Live. Now, you do have to um, sign up for alerts, and I'll show you how you can um, sign up for, uh, to receive alerts for uh, your equipment. Quantity and unit, so this is what it's sold as. So this comes in a pack of 25. It can be a pack, a pallet, um, whatever it is that that, and, and how you're purchasing this product. Other fields that you can enter in here is details purchasing, um, costs on here. If you're looking at uh, capturing costs for each of the equipment, um, you can find out or you can enter in costs right here. If this is FEMA related, you can find the cost code and the rate uh, for that piece of equipment. Um, and then there's units in here that you can select. So as of today, the only unit that calculates correctly um, is going to be our, all these other ones, um, we are going to be working on a release um, for, I believe it is day and month, but these other ones do not calculate cost correctly. So as of today, only just our. And then you also have the ability to enter in location and contact in here. So where is this item located? Who do I need to contact if I want to, um, you know, borrow or loan, you know, uh, this piece of equipment? 
Um, deployable at the top here, so if this piece of equipment is deployable, you can mark it as deployable. I know on here it doesn't show that there's a little checkbox, but there really is. If you just click on deployable, what's going to happen is going to make all these um, fields right here required. So for a deployable piece of equipment, you must have the location entered in and the contact person. Now the one thing I know on here, it says latitude and longitude required for plotting. This is for a future release. Um, where it's going to plot this in um, Esri. So that's a additional feature that we are working on at the moment, where it plots your um, equipment and people onto um, a GIS map. So as you start typing in an address, what's going to happen is this is going to pop up, and as you select one from the drop-down, it'll also enter in your latitude and longitude. Okay. So this, these different fields right here, it's, it's important to kind of notate because these fields are everything that you're going to see within the import, which is what we're going to go through next. So if I click Save on here, this is going to take me to the profile. So in the profile in here, you'll see you'll have different options to enter in additional data. For example, you have the ability to uh, add a picture. So if you want to take a picture of the face mask, you can do so. So this one is to upload a existing picture, and this icon right here with this, this little video cam icon is to take a picture. So if your computer has an external camera attached, um, you can basically take a picture and upload that to this item. Now there is a way to upload a picture by using the inventory app, which I'll show you as well. So that's an, another easier way to capture a picture of an item. You'll see on here the, uh, the inventory status is available. You'll notice that this is not selectable. If this was a fixed asset, you'd be able to select or click on this and select a different inventory status. So you can change the status straight from Salamander Live. Of course, you can also change the status within the inventory app as well, too. But the inventory status of a consumable item is going to be affected by the quantity on hand. So this will stay available until this goes to, this goes to zero. Once the quantity hits zero, this will now uh, change to out of stock. Um, if we continue going down, this is the other feature that is available uh, for a inventory item is alerts. So for each item that you have in, in your inventory database, you're able to create an alert. These are all the different alert types that you can create. A reorder one, you can if you want to create a manual reorder, so it lets you know when you need to reorder a, a piece of item, you can select that. Receive, dispose, expected return, relocate, expiration. If there's an inspection for this piece of equipment, you can enter that in, repair, etc. So if you go through this list and you can't find what you're looking for, there is another option in here as well, too. So in here, I'm just going to put an inspection. Next on here is date. So what is the date that this inspection is due? So this is also going to be the trigger date. What I mean by trigger date is that this is going to trigger that notification that's going to uh, that's going to come out to your email. So if I put this for August 1st, so this is going to go in a status of pending. Once August 1st hits, um, or actually August 2nd hits, it's going to show expired for the status on here because this inspection was due on August 1st. So in here, you can put an inspection on here. So if this was a reusable mask, you can put in here, um, inspect and disinfect. And then you can see a reoccurrence in here. Reoccurrence in here, you can just press the up or down to add the reoccurrence. So every one, and then you can choose your duration. So is it every one year, month, week, or day? So that we can put on here, every, you know, once a week, if you wanted to do this, you can, you can put that in there. Any notes that you want to put for this, this alert, you can put it in here. Once you're done with this, just click Save, and now this alert has been added. You can create as many alerts as you want for one piece of item. So you'll see in here, here's the, pending, the status. It's going to be in as pending. Any questions on creating alerts? Next, I'll show you how you can go in and edit an alert and mark it as complete. Oh, I hear some background noise. Let me just mute someone. All right, so 
once you're ready to complete this, so let's say we're going through and we're trying to complete this, there's two ways you can you can complete the alert. You can click on the piece of equipment and go in here and, and edit it. So once you create one, you are able to edit that and mark it as complete. So you'll see on here, since we saved it, we're able to go in here and mark this complete if we want to. Now you can also add, add notes in here saying uh, what you did for this specific inspection. So you can put notes on here, you know, wipe it down with Lysol wipes, you know, et cetera. You can put whatever it is that you did in there, the action. And then you can mark it as complete. Once you mark it as complete, what's going to happen is it's going to go into a report. So there's a there's a, a, a bunch of alert reports that you can pull in. The alert reports there's going to be is um, based off of status. So those that are pending, those that are expired, and those that are complete. So all your notes and everything will be available in that completed um, um, report. So I'll show you that as well later. The other area in which you can find your alerts is going to be on your home dashboard. So on your home dashboard, when you get inventory management, you will also get this additional tile called alert list. So by default, the alert list is hidden. So if this is your first time um, going in here looking at your alert list, you'll want to go into your tiles menu and click on the alert list. So it is hidden um, by default. So you'll find it in here, just click on it and it'll add it to your uh, layout. So with the alert list, this is very similar, it works very similar to your, um, your credentials and qualifications notice. So you'll, you'll notice that there is uh, three different tabs in here. There's expiring within the next seven days, expiring in the next 30 days, and those that have already expired within the last 30 days. So you can go through in here and you can um, click a, uh, this icon right here to export this into a CSV report, or you can go in here and you can actually um, mark these as complete. So you'll see on here, I mean, this is, this is not what you want it to be, but this is our training account, so we've got a bunch of these. You'll see that these reorder ones will come through automatically. So once it drops, you'll automatically get this. So item has dropped below reorder threshold. Any notes and uh, I'm sorry, the description will be located in here as well too. So if you want to complete something, you can just select on multiple items. So if I want to select these 10 items, you'll see that this complete box comes or this complete button now becomes available. So you have to select one or more. I can mark these as complete. What's going to happen is it says, are you sure you want to complete the selected alerts? I can click OK. Now, one thing about these reorder ones, you can mark these as complete as you want, but you'll continue to get these notifications because you haven't done anything to this actual item, which means that, you know, this item is dropped below the reorder threshold. You're still um, under that threshold, so you'll continue to get these notifications. These notifications come out once a day. They're usually around in the morning, anywhere from like 4 to 6, 6 a.m. is when you get these notifications. So if today you end up getting... Um, dropping below the threshold, you won't receive this notification until tomorrow. So in here, these are all clickable, so you can click them into the actual item itself. You can go in here. Obviously, that's not a gauze, picture of a gauze, but so you'll see in here, it's out of stock. So to fix this, you can just click on the edit, the pencil, and you can edit the quantity in stock. So if you put the reorder in, you receive this, you can put your, your purchasing information in here, Go in here and edit your quantity on hand. The quantity on hand is going to be 250. Click Save. What's going to happen? This is this is now going to be available. And then you'll see on here you'll have all these different expired. So you can from this screen right here, this alert screen, you aren't able to select multiple to mark them as complete. You do have to go through these one at a time. The only way as of today that you can mark multiple complete is through the um, alerts list dashboard. Any questions on alerts? How to add an alert, how to mark them as complete? Okay. So how do you get these alert notifications? So if you click on your profile, so where it says welcome and then your name, your username, you'll be able to see this option called active subscriptions. Click that pencil icon. That pencil icon, this is where you can go in and subscribe to receive email alerts. 
So there's three options in here. One is unsubscribe, which is what I am right now. You can choose my primary organization only. So what happens if you select this, you're only going to receive alert notifications for your primary organization. So whatever organization you're attached to within your profile. The other option on here is all alerts. So regardless of it's part of your organization, if it's, or if it's part of your account, you'll receive all alerts. So it's really up to you and how you want to receive those notifications. So what does those notifications look like? So I've got an email here. I'll show you what that notification is going to look like. So it's going to come from family notification. So this is who it's coming from. make it bigger. So Salamander notifications is who it's coming from, so uh, make sure you check your spam and junk to ensure that you're receiving those. Um, but it's going to show you the alert date, the organization, the item name, alert type, and the description, and any notes that you entered in for that piece of equipment. Now you aren't able to take any actions on this, but this basically will tell you what um, alerts um, are, are basically do and the, or and then you can go in and um, change these as needed. Questions? All right. So the other option in here. Um, so I showed you guys how to do the um, adding a piece of equipment one at a time. The easiest way is going to do the import. So in here you are able to import equipment. So all your inventory equipment in here. So if you click on import and click on equipment, in here you'll be able to see that there's an option. And let me make this bigger. I apologize. So it's easier to see. So in here you'll be able to, to um, go in and select a file. So in here when you click in, in this, this, this pop-up window is going to have instructions and also the CSV template. When you're doing import, we highly recommend you utilize our CSV template. So if you click on the here link, it's going to open up the template. So the template in here is going to contain all of the fields. So let's see when that populates. It's going to contain all of the fields that's required. So here's the fields. These are all the fields that you saw when we went through and did that manual add of a, a piece of equipment. So these are all the uh, fields. So you'll see that there's a bunch of them in here. Now, as you remember, there's only three fields that's required, the organization name, the ID, and the item name. That's it. If that's all you want to put into the system, that's, that's fine. Now, with the template, we also have a um, quick start guide that's going to help you. So I recommend you go through this quick start guide. So this quick start guide is going to have all of the um, accepted formats um, that you'll need in order to fill out the, that uh, template correctly. So it's going to have a little checklist here for you, and then it's also going to uh, go through the compatible file. So the file, if you're working through Excel, just make sure you save it as a CSV file so that you can import it incorrectly. Now going through this is going to have all of the different fields in here. It's going to show you the length max, type, the values, and then no, any notes in here. So any anyone that's required is going to have that, uh, that asterisk next to it. Now if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, there is going to be some options in here for you for workflows. So these workflows, let me just right here. These workflows are for parent-child imports. So as, you, as I mentioned earlier when we were going through that manual ad, there's that parent field. We always get a lot of questions on how um, to import parent-child equipment. There's a couple ways you can do this. So workflow one, if the parent assets already exist in Salamander Live, this is the scenario that you would go through to import in the child equipment, so all the children. So the most important thing is to copy the parent equipment IDs and their associated organization information from Salamander Live and enter that in those associated fields, which is the parent ID and parent equipment. So here is a sample. So if I 
already have the parent equipment in, in Salamander Live. This is going to be the child equipment. I can go in here, enter in all the child equipment. You'll see in here that the parent ID and organization name is not entered in. Out here, I'll see Moosewood OEM. All I need to do is now go into Salamander Live and grab the parent equipment ID. So in here, you'll go into equipment, and then you can search for that item, or you can pull a report. The easiest way is to pull a report. You can pull a CSV report in here that's going to pull your entire or your full inventory report, and then you can filter that list and search through that Excel spreadsheet, which is a lot easier. So this is the ID number that it's looking for, so for the parent ID. So you just copy and paste that into this field right here, or I'm sorry, into this field right here. And then to process the import, just simply click Import, select your file, uh, let's see here, select your file, and then upload. Simple as that. The other way that you can do this is the parent assets do not exist in Salamander Alive, and custom IDs will be used. So in this case, um, you import the child equipment first, or I'm sorry, the parent equipment first. So in here, I've got the parent equipment. So here's the parent equipment. You can go in here. And you can put in the custom ID. So if this custom ID is one, two, three, four, five, six, um, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you can basically take those and put those into the child equipment, which is oops, which is this here. So you can put that in in I'm sorry in in here. So whatever it is, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So you can copy that there. Oops, type. And then you have that field. So those are all custom IDs. You can go in here. You can put in your custom IDs in here. Um, so whatever it is that you're looking for, you can add your custom IDs in here. Didn't want to do that, but but you get the idea. You can go in here. So you can go in there and you can enter in your different custom IDs in here for each of these. So that's one way that you can do this. And then the last way is if the parent assets do not exist in Salamander Alive and system generated IDs will be used. So I, I apologize. <laughs> I went backwards on this. So this is what you want to utilize like for this. So custom ID, or system generated IDs, system generated IDs, or custom IDs. So here is a one with custom IDs. I apologize on that. So here are here is a import that has the custom IDs in here. So you can put all your equipment, your inventory database, you know, in one spreadsheet. So in here I also have the parent and I also have the child. So in here you'll see this is the parent right here, and this is a child of this parent. So you see the parent ID is put in here. So you can utilize this import file to add in your child and your parent. The great thing about this is that because you're utilizing custom IDs, you can put everything on one spreadsheet versus doing multiple as this suggests right here. So in this, if you're using system generated IDs, you have to do multiple imports. You have to do your parent first, do your child, do your grandchild, and then do your great-grandchild. So then you would continue this process until all the levels of parent-child relationships have been created. So this process is a little bit longer when you're looking at using system generated IDs, but this is going to help create that linkage correctly. If you don't do it in this way, you may have some issues when you're looking at importing, and your import may not go through. Now when you do the import, so on here I imported this, upload file. The file actually just takes a couple you know, minutes to upload. What's going to happen is you're going to receive an email um, from Salamander notifications within 15 minutes. So I've got some samples here to show you. So these are some sam samples on what you can receive. So here is one. So this one here is an import complete. So you'll see there's two pieces of 
equipment that were processed. Zero was added, one was updated. What was the reason why? So in here you'll see um, some comments, some notes in here that tells you what happened with your import. If you see any errors, that means that those records did not import. And there's a reason why, because you have required information that's missing. So for example, in row two, the organization name City of Musu Volunteers was not found. That just means that this organization does not exist. So with all your imports, make sure that the organization already exists before you do your import. Because then you'll get this message and that, that record will not, or those records will not import. The other um, warnings that you may get is going to be a warning. So the warnings in here basically just state that the, um, there's something that's missing from it. So what's going to happen in a warning is that either Salomon or Live is going to ignore the information or it's going to truncate it. So in this case, it's saying, hey, uh, no value was provided for the item name. So these are just updates in here. So you'll see that there was um, row two. It, um, it just ignored that information. And row three, it updated it because this is tied to row two, that's why this one didn't, didn't go through. But row three, it did update the record, but it just skipped this item column, which is called item name. So those are the different types of warnings that you can, can receive. There's other ones that you can get too. You can get one that shows um, everything was completed. So this is one that shows there's four records that were processed, two were added, and two were updated. Updated. So yes, you can use the import to update your existing records. Just make sure that in your import file, that ID number is entered in here. If you don't have the ID number in here, what it's going to do, it's going to recreate or it's going to create a brand new item for, for this. So that's going to be important. So whether a record is updated or added is based off of this ID number right here. Okay. Any questions on the import process? I didn't show this, but this is one that you, sh you may get if you're missing an actual header. So this is the only time that you would ever get a failed import is if you're missing a required header. So in here, this is for a, a personnel record. So the personal record also requires a first and last name, and those column headers were missing from the import. So in, in the case of a piece of equipment, if you're missing the organization header, column header, or you're missing the item name, column header, or the item, or item ID, um, you will get this error. That when you get this error, that means your import completely failed. Nothing was imported in at all, or no records were updated. So you have to go back through and fix whatever it is it's telling you to fix in here. Okay? Any questions? No questions? All right. Well, next we'll just go into the inventory app. So I've got the inventory app on two different devices, Android and iOS. I'll work off of my iOS device on here. So let me just get that up and running. So the platform itself for the inventory app, it works on both Android and iOS. The look and feel should be about the same. There's a little differences here and there that you'll see, but for the most part, everything works exactly the same. And it should look the same. So you'll see here is um, this bigger, you'll see this is iOS, and on this side you'll see this is Android. You'll see it's the same look and feel. So same account, everything. It's just that on your Android device, if you've got one that has um, the back buttons, those will be contained on, um, or if you have a back button on your phone, you'll be able to click back on there. So you'll notice little differences here and there, but for the most part, everything is going to work the same. So when you log in, um, you want to use your same uh, logins. If you have Salomon or Live, it's going to be your same logins for that. If you are utilizing the Track app, Tag app, um, it's going to be the same username and password. So we just have the same username and password across all of our uh, mobile applications and logins for Salomon or Live. 
you log in for the very first time, it's going to take you to the issue screen. So the issue screen is basically going to be your, your main home screen. At the top, you'll notice that there's these three bars that's going to be your main menu. So if you tap on that, that's going to pull down um, some options in which you can toggle to uh, go to return inventory and adjust inventory. So these are all the functionalities that's available today within the inventory app. We are working on additional functions to add to the inventory app, but those are going to be in future releases. For example, to do a full fiscal inventory count that's coming in a, in a much future release. You're also able to tap this back button to log out of the application. So once you're logged in, you don't have to log in and out unless you manually go in and log out. So the very first time you log in, you basically stay logged in. So when you're looking at issuing equipment, oops, let me go back and delete that, sorry. So when you're looking at issuing equipment, what you're doing is you're creating a cart. So for every issuance that you do, you're basically adding items to a cart so that you can view your summary before you issue out the items. Now, when you're looking at issuing equipment, you have to have at least one piece of equipment in your cart and you have to add have a person that's been assigned to that piece of equipment. So once you have those two pieces of information, you'll be able to issue out um, those equipment items. To add items as simply as tapping on the items. So on here, I'm going to add in this 3.5 millimeter earpiece. I'll go ahead and tap that. If I want to scroll through, I can scroll through my list and start adding in more items. So in here, if I wanted to add I'm just going to go through and just add some items in here. This radio, this Apex 3, 8000 radio, I can just tap on that. So you can just go through and continue to tap on the items that you're looking to add. Now you'll see that there's some functionality at the top here that helps you zone in on the specific piece of item you're looking for. You are able to search for a piece of item. So on here, if I type in fire and tap search, I can search for anything that starts with fire. So you'll see on here, fire extinguisher, fire hose, fire truck, all that populates in here. So that allows you to quickly and easily find certain items. If you want to do another search, just tap the X right here, and you can search for another piece of, of equipment. So I don't know if we have any masks in here. Let's look and see. We should. There, there's a ton of face masks in here. So you got your disposable in here, and you got your full face masks in here. Again, to add an item, just type, uh, just tap in that item. You'll see that it decrements by zero, and it adds those items to your cart. So this right here is showing you a quick summary of what's in your cart right now. So you've got three items in your cart. Right here, there's no person that's associated yet. So if you want to completely get out of this search screen, tap X, and then tap the back button at the top here. And that's going to take you back to your main screen. My, my phone is a little touchy right now. There it is. So now we're back to our issue screen. The other way that you can do this is you can filter. So at the top here, you see this filter icon, and you can filter by three uh, areas. You can filter by category. So if you set up categories for your equipment, you can, you can do it by that. You can filter by organization, and you can also uh, filter by parent. So in here, if I start typing in a list of my categories that start with M, should populate. So in here, i got medical dressing, I've got motorcycle. If I tap apply, anything that's under the motorcycle category is going to populate. So in here, I've got some motorcycle trailer and toolbox repair equipment. Again, I can just tap on those to add those items to the cart. You'll notice in the filter icon, there's an X on there. That's to help you know that there is a filter that's been set, that this is not the entirety of your um, inventory database. To clear the filter, just tap on the filter icon again, and you can tap clear. So what that does is it clears that category field, and now you can filter the list again by another filter. So if you want to do by organization, you can do by organization. As I start typing, all the organizations that start with MOO is going to populate. You do have to select one in here. So you select that, and then you can tap Apply. Now, you are able to filter by all three of the areas. So you can uh, filter the list by category, 
of the organization and the parent. So that really does help you zone in on that piece of equipment that you're looking for. And then tap apply, all equipment is going to populate in here. Now one thing I wanted to notate on here is for parent. So on parent, you'll see on here I've got fire truck and first aid kit. So let's do first aid kit. What's in first aid kit? Nothing. Let's do fire truck again. Uh, let's try that one. Okay, so this is a great idea, uh, great example. So if you filter by parent, what's going to happen is all the items that's under that parent will be listed. Now, you can't just select the parent, which is going to automatically select everything else. That's not how the inventory app works as of today. If you filter by the parent and you want that parent in there, you do have to add the parent, and then you have to go in and add all the, ch the child equipment that belongs in that, that truck, if that's how you, if you wanted to issue up that truck and everything that's that's on that truck. You have to select the truck first, go in, um, filter the list by the truck and then, or the parent, and then go in and select all the child equipment that, that belongs in that truck. So then it adds all that those items to your um, inventory cart. Any questions on that? Now you also have the ability to scan in items as well too. So I showed you guys the manual way. If you have all your equipment that has barcodes on them, you are able to um, scan those in. Now in Salamander Live, I'll show you this really quick here, there's the ability for you to go in here and, and print out barcodes. So in here, if you go into, I'm just gonna print five to show you real quick. So if I go in here and I select these and I click print, there's an option for you to print these out. So in here, if you choose the two by one, those are the, the two by one that has like the, the name of the item, the organization, and the QR code. And you can place that in, on, in, on the piece of equipment. You also have the ability to do the, um, in half by 11, which prints out 10 barcodes per sheet. So this is what I have here. This is a sample of what you are able to print with, with this one here. So this is the um, 5163. And what that does is it just prints off 10 barcodes per sheet. And if you want the images on there, it'll print off the images as well too. But if you have barcodes on there, you can go in and start scanning those items. So in here, let me just move this back. So at the bottom here, you'll see that there's a scan icon right here. I can tap that scan button, and I can scan my equipment. So in here, you'll see that this is going to populate up. We'll give it a second for it to populate. Oh. Let me go through this one right here, my Android. My mirroring app for iOS doesn't work the best, so let me go through this again. So right here, scan. Scan this item. So this is something that you may see in here. So this item is already issued out to Andrew Grill. So if you're scanning items and it's already issued out and it was never returned, you're going to receive this little pop-up message that says, hey, this item has been issued out to this person. Do you want to reissue reissued out to the new person here. What If you click add to cart, what's going to happen is going to add that item to the cart. It doesn't issue it out yet until you go back through and, and, and tap issue. But it's going to, when you tap issue, it's going to remove the, or return the item from Andrew Grill and then you reissue it out to this new person you've just selected. Okay, so that's another option that you'll see in there. So you'll see that the camera stays active. So if you're familiar with using um, any of our mobile applications, it goes into continuous scan mode, which allows you to, oh, it's the same one. It allows you to um, scan in multiple items at one time. So let me get my, oh, these are all been issued out to the answer bill. Let me do something else in here. Let's see. There's a bunch of equipment. There it is. You'll see that little message populates at the bottom there. Item has been added. 
you can just continue to start scanning in items. Scan as much as you want in here. So here's another one. So if an item was marked as out of service or missing and you scan that item, it's going to populate in here this little message that says, hey, this item was marked out of service. Do you want to change the status and add it to cart? So if you add it to the cart, what's going to happen is that when you issue this out, it's going to change the status of that item from out of service to um, assigned. Once you assign it and you return it, it will go back into available. So you'll see in here, I've got five items on here. So if I'm, so the next thing on here is to add the person. So there's two ways you can add the person on here. I can tap the little icon, the person icon, and I can select someone from Salamander Live. So this is pulling your database, so your, your personnel database from Salamander Live. I can go through this list and select someone. So this is going to William Allen. Let's do Rose Alexander, I can select that person. And here I can search for the person as well. If you have their tags, you can scan their tags. So on here, I'm just gonna scan this tag in. So because we already had someone in the cart, you're gonna get this replace message. So you wanna replace this person with the next person you just scanned in, just tap add to cart. And you're, again, this stays active. So you'll see here, five items to George Smith. So if they've got a picture in there, it's gonna show that picture. Once you're done, just tap the gray area. So on Android, you're, you, you are able to, um, to swipe on here, but the easiest way is to just tap this gray area right here. So this is your cart summary. Just tap on that, and that's gonna take you into your cart summary. So in here, you'll see on here that there is um, all these items. So there's five items on here. If you want to delete something, let's say you, you, you have two police Dodge Cruisers in here, you want to delete it, just tap and swipe to the left, and then tap delete. So again, tap to the left and, and delete. For each issuance that you do, you are able to connect this to an event. So on here, I have an event in here already. I'm going to delete that. Again, tap and swipe to the left and tap delete. So this is what the message says, is add event. Connect issuance to an event. What this does is it uh, pulls all your issuances and ties it to an event so that in Salamander Live, when you click on the event dashboard and you go into that event, you'll be able to see an inventory history report that shows you all uh, inventory items, which includes fixed assets and consumables that were issued out during this event. So on here, if I tap on this, it's going to pull down all the in-progress events that's running in Salamander Live. So on here, if I tap this command demo, now this issuance I'm going to do is going to be tied to this event called command demo. Now if you've got consumable items in here, and I didn't scan a consumable item, let me just scan a consumable item in here. Let me just scan this real quick. So I'm going to scan the APR cartridges. So when you scan a consumable item, this is what populates. You're going to choose your quantity. So on here at the top, you'll see that there's nine in stock. So that's your what you have in stock. You can go here. You can type in or scroll up and down to select your quantity. So I'm going to choose a quantity of two and tap apply. So again, in your cart summary, you also have the ability to scan in barcodes from here. So you can do everything from here minus manually add. If you wanted to go back and add more items, Tap the top area at the top. Again, this is going to take you back to your issue screen. So tap the bottom again, and it's going to take you back to your issue cart. Once you're ready to issue this out, just simply tap issue. Once you tap issue, you can get this message. It's going to say issue success. Here's all the items that were issued out, and now you can return to cart and continue on issuing to the next person. You'll notice that because you selected an event, this event stays in here unless you go in and remove it. So it just really, it, it saves you that additional step of selecting the event. So it's, it's notating that, hey, since you selected an event, it's assuming that you are adding, or I'm sorry, issuing out more equipment to people for this event. Any questions on issuance? All right. So let's go through the return process then. So on the return side, again, you're going to tap the menu icon at the top. 
and that's going to take you to return inventory. So just select return inventory, and that's going to pull down all the returns. Now this list right here that you see um, in the inventory app is going to list only those items that are uh, set as fixed assets. No consumables will be listed in here. The reason for that is because consumables are made to be used up. So more than likely you aren't going to be returning those items at all. However, there is a way for you to return um, consumable items. So if the, if the item was unused, unopened, and you want to put that back into your inventory, you are able to do that by scanning their uh, their tag, that, that barcode on that returnable item. So I'll show you that process real quick here. So first, let's just walk through the process for returning a fixed asset. So in here, you'll see Rachel Buckner. If I wanted to return just her backpack and radio holster, I can just select those items, and it'll add it to my return card. So you'll see here I've got already some items in my return card. Let me just go through and play my part and go back. So let's do that again. So backpack and three and a half milliliter earpiece. So she still has the radio holster and the two-way radio, but she's only returning those two items. Now, if, for example, George Faulkner was going to re return all his items that's issued out to him, I can just tap his name. Once I tap his name, all items that's been issued under him will be added to the return card. You'll see now we've got four items in here. Here's all the items for Andrew Grill. Just tap his name, and all the items that's been issued out to him will be added to the return card. Now, you are also able to scan it as well, too. So let me just go back and, and clear this real quick. So, for example, Andrew Grill has all these items on here. If I have the barcodes, I can scan those in as well, too. So I've got barcodes for these. So I can scan those to return them. So that's an item. See so the scan here? That item has been added. You'll see if there's an option for you to mark it as damaged. If you mark this as damaged, if you tap on that, it's going to mark that piece of equipment as out of service. So it's going to give you a little pop-up. Are you sure you want to mark this as out of service? You can do it from that screen by uh, once you scan it, or you can do it on the, um, on the return cart as well, too. So I'll show you that process as well. So I'm going to say yes, and that's going to move that item to out of service. I can continue to um, scan an item. So there it is, LED baton. So there's all the items that have been, that have been returned. Now, if you have consumable items, you do have to scan in that barcode. So this is the only way to, uh, only way to return consumable items is to scan that barcode. So I recommend that if you are looking at taking back consumable items, to print out all your consumable items on a, you know, by choosing the 8.5 by 11 and putting this into a three ring binder. So you have those available for those people that are scanning, um, issuing and returning equipment. So on here, I'm going to return these. Just scan that real quick. So you'll see this is what populates on here. So this is what's going to populate in here. It says choose quantity. So you can return up to 10 at a time, or I'm sorry, 100 at a time. So it's not telling you how many were issued out. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't keep track of how many were issued out. It's just going to say, okay, you have one item there or two items. Is that how many you want to return? So you can go in there and select the quantity that that person is returning to you. So we, I know that I issued out two. He used one. He, he didn't use the other, so I can return the other one. Then so you just tap apply, and it adds it to my cart. So now you see I've got 10 items to the cart. You're not adding any person or anything in here because it's already tied to a specific person. So if I go to my cart, again, tap that gray area at the bottom, it'll take me to my return cart. In my return cart, you'll see that item, that, I, that, that equipment uh, that I marked as out of service as damaged. Now, you, as I said, you are able to go in here and mark them as such in here. So for example, uh, for this LED baton. Let's say the LED portion of the baton is not working anymore. I can tap the three, these three dots right here, which is going to pull down a menu. I can mark it as missing or out of service. When you mark these items as missing or out of service, it's going to appear in a missing or out of, or missing and out of service um, report. So there's a report in Salamander Live that you can view all this data. So you'll see on here I've got all the items. 
you'll see any of these that have a number on there is going to be a, a, a consumable item. So in here, if I tap on that number, I can change the consumable item. So how many I'm returning in here. See on that. You'll see that the scan button's at the top there that you'll also be able to, to scan and return items from the return card. Once you're happy with all the items that you're looking at returning, just tap return. And then you're going to get a message that says all items that were returned successfully. It puts you back into your return cart, tap back, and then you can return additional items if needed. Or you can toggle back to issue out more equipment. Any questions on returning inventory items? Okay. Last but not least is adjust in, excuse me, adjust inventory. So this here, again, as we talked about, you are able to change the status. You are able to adjust the quantity on hand. You'll able, be able to take a picture, um, but you are, are also able to do an audit. So each time you scan an item, that's basically marking it as a piece of item that you've audited. So on here, let's take a look at the uh, consumable item first. So for consumable item, let's just go ahead and scan this APR cartridge. So in the APR cartridge, so for consumable item, you'll see on here, this is what populates. So there's a picture of the item, the status. For a consumable item, you aren't able to change the status on here. Again, remember the status is based off of the quantity on hand. You'll notice that the quantity on hand on here is green compared to all the others. The reason for that is because you are able to tap on that and adjust the quantity. So this is where the um, differences in iOS and Android come in. So in, in Android, you are able to go in and actually type in a number. In iOS, you do have to scroll to select a number. So that's a difference in there that we will be making a change in the future so that they work the same. So I changed the quantity. It hasn't saved yet. I do have to uh, tap this check mark at the top to save it. But once you make a change, you can go in here and make some notes. So this note is going to be available in the fiscal count report that's also available in Salamander Live. So on here, I can put um, quantity change. Oops, I can spell quantity change. So I can put notes on there. I can change the picture if I wanted to. So on here, I can tap on this. I can change the picture by taking a photo, choosing from the library. The moment you take a photo or you select one from the library and you add it, it will immediately be updated to Salamander Live. So this is the one thing that's immediate is this picture. Everything else uh, for quantity, the notes and the um, quantity change, you do have to tap the check mark. So if I tap the check mark on here, going to save the item and I can go back in and scan the next item on here. So for a fixed asset, you'll notice on here, this is the fixed asset. It's a little bit different. So you'll see on here, here's the, the picture. This one doesn't have a picture on here. You'll see the status on here is out of service because we marked that as out of service when we did the return. You can go in here and you can change the status. So if you tap this area right here, my phone's a little finicky. There it is. So you'll see on here, there's, when you tap on that, you'll see that this populates, this available, out of service, or missing. So you can change the status right from the inventory app as well, too. So I marked this as out of service um, on the return side, but if I made a mistake, I could put this back to available. And I can make, make my notes in here on why you made that change. You are also able to take a picture on here. So again, you tap that, that icon, that photo icon, you can take a picture or choose from the library. So if I just take a photo, I'm just going to take this photo here. So you see on here it says retry, OK. If I tap OK, it's going to add that photo immediately on there. So this photo has been uploaded already to Salamander Live. Now I can tap the check mark, and then I can scan the next item in. So it's as simple as that. So in Salamander Live here, I might have to all selections. So here it is. 
there's the image I took in there. You'll see in here that it's sideways in here. This is a bug that we are looking at fixing because we took the picture um, portrait, but then it rotated it and made it landscape. So that is a bug. We do know that, and then we are looking at getting that fixed. So we apologize for the inconvenience that causes, but this, this occurs on the, the Android side. But you'll see on here I changed the status to available. Once I saved it, I put it in there, and now the picture's up in here. So for reports, here are all the reports that's available within Salamander Live for all your equipment. So in here, if you go to Equipment and click on the Report icon, these are all the reports that's available for inventory. So here's the alert report that I talked about earlier. If you click on that, you can change, I mean, you can select what kind of report you're looking for. If you want to look for all the pending, all the expired, all the complete. And then you can church, uh, select a alert type as well, too. So I'm going to just do all and then run report. Open that up, and this is going to show you all the rep all the uh, inventory items that were completed. Here they are. So item name, complete, who was completed, who was created by, and who was completed by. So it has all this information in here. Here's your full inventory. Here's your issued. So this issued one is for anybody that has inventory that's issued out to them. You can run the report. This is going to show you all equipment that's issued out currently as of today. Sorry, i make this bigger so it's easier to see. So here's the issued to, issued date, issued by the item name, and then if there's oops, there's costs associated to it. And then it's also going to show you the issue to email their phone number. So this is a great way for you to contact that person if you need that piece of inventory back. You've got contact information in here. Again, you only will have contact information here if that person has um, contact information on their Salamander Live profile. If they don't have any in there, you're going to see blank in here. So that's why it's important to, to have contact information, email, and phone number for each uh, personal record that you enter into Salamander Live. Other one in here is you're missing an out of service. So again, if you mark any as missing or out of service in Salamander Live or the inventory app, those will populate in here. Your parent-child report, this is going to show all of your uh, parent-child equipment that's, that has a, that's connected. Reorder report, so that's that reorder report I was showing you about. So on here that I was talking with you about when you enter in um, quantity on hand, max on stock, and everything. And this is going to show you what you need to, to reorder and how much you need to reorder. So right here, for example, I'll show you this. So I really like this report because this is great for those that are in the purchasing department. So right here, the quantity, reorder quantity, sold as max in stock, quantity to order. So here it's going to show you what you need to order in order for you to hit your max in stock. And then what, what is the unit and what is the cost, extended cost for that. So on here, because the uh, max in stock is a lot, it's going to show you that you need to order a lot on here. It's going to be based off of your quantity on hand. So on here is zero. My max in stock is uh, 500,000. This comes in a uh, in a pack of 100, so that's why I have to order 5,000 of these, uh, what is it, two ply bandages. So again, you have to have all these fields filled out in order to get this quantity to order um, column to fill in any information. Other reports on here is your consumables. So you, any of your consumables, you can pull up a detail report or a summary report in here. So they separate your fixed. So this right here, this is only your issued missing out of service is only going to be for fixed assets. If you want to look at consumable information, you're going to have to pull up these consumable uh, reports down here, which is going to show you your detail report. You've got to do it from the dates. You do from oops, days, dates. 
I know we're running out of time. It's 11.05. I apologize. But I'm almost done. I, I just want to show you guys these additional reports real quick. So here's this report. Shows you the date issued. Issued by. And then if there's any cost. So that's a detailed report versus a summary. The summary is a little bit less information on there. And then last is your physical count report. So this is that one I was telling you that anytime you scan a piece of item through that adjust inventory function in the inventory app, it's going to immediately put it under the counted column. Any that you don't scan is going to go under not counted. So if we just do from today's date, I'm just going to copy and paste that in here. It's going to show everything that we just did today, which should be two items. So here it is. This is the report. So any, uh, any comments you made, here's that comment section right there. Quantity change. It shows the activity date, who did it, who made the change, the status, and then any information on here. And cost. So that's the fiscal count report. The last report on here is going to be on the event side. So this is based off of the event. So on here, I'm going to select Command Demo since that's the one that we issued all the equipment to. I click on Reports. There's this report called Inventory History. I click on that. This is going to open up an Excel spreadsheet that shows all inventory that was issued out for this event. So this shows a combination of fixed and consumables. You'll see here's a consumable item, and here's all the other fixed items on here. It's going to show you kind of a combination of those reports I, I, I pulled up, the issued report, the um, missing out of service, and consumable report. So this is kind of a combination of all those reports in there. It shows you the event date. It, when it was issued, who was issued to, who was issued by, when it was returned, who was returned by, the current status. So if you marked it as missing out of service or anything, it's going to show you that status in there. So again, this is the current status. So if it was returned, it's going to show as available. Issued quantity, the rate, the cost, and you'll be able to see the reimbursement um, costs in here as well, too, for all of your uh, inventory items. Any questions on this report or any of the reports we went through? Does anybody have questions on anything that we covered today? All right. Well, that concludes our inventory uh, management training. We, again, it was a high level. We didn't go through uh, everything in, in complete detail, but I tried to do as much as we can in the time that we were provided. Now, all of the um, information that I just went over is available in Salamander University. So you can go into here and click on inventory management, and you'll see that there are uh, little video tutorials you can go through to go through everything I just covered in more detail. And of course, we also have um, the user guides that's available under documents. So there's a user guide in here for inventory management and the inventory app. And then we also have a quick reference guide for the inventory app. We are currently creating a little booklet. So it's like a pocket booklet for inventory, uh, for the inventory app as well too, so that you know those are in the field that are issuing our equipment, they can just quickly use that little booklet as a reference if it's perfectly in their shirt pocket or back pocket. So that will be coming out soon as well. And then of course we've got past uh, recordings that's available in the webinar recording section in here. So we've got the back to basics. So we will add in the track solution and this inventory one in here so you can go back and review any of the pre-recorded uh, or past recorded uh, videos as well. All right, if there's no questions, I just want to thank everyone for being a part of the call today. Um, I couldn't do this without you guys, so thank you so much. 
Hopefully you guys come back um, next month. We are going to be going through hurricane preparedness. Again, it's that season, so I want to be able to provide our customers that are impacted by hurricanes on the East Coast um, to <clears throat> kind of learn about how Salamander can help support them during, during those types of disasters. So thank you all so much. Have a wonderful day, and I'll talk with you guys next time.